We could talk about whatever we want to talk about because we're grown ups. I got stuff on my pants. Let me wipe that off. <laughs> I'm sure it's fine. What is it? Is it from here? No, no. Um, I don't like donut stuff because I had a powdered donut. It was like all over my sweater too because I'm a grown up. <laughs> I'm jealous. A powdered donut. Oh. I've been on a diet. I haven't had a. Ay, ay, ay. Even the I got this diet ice cream. Well, I can't really eat regular ice cream anyway because I have this growing dairy Lactose? Thing. It's not lactose. It's weird. It's like an allergy. Like, it makes my throat itch. Oh, no. You're allergic to cheese? Certain cheese doesn't do it. It's milk. Yeah, milk does it for me. Yeah. Something in the way it's processed or something. It could be just milk from New York, too, because when I go back to Wisconsin, I actually drink a glass of milk and really? be fine. But, yeah. Drink a glass of New York milk and I'm shitting for an hour. <laughs> yeah, mine's the other way. Like, it makes me throw up. Oh. Like, it doesn't give me a stomach ache or anything. It makes me, it makes my inner ear itches, my throat itches, and then I have to throw up. That sucks. Yeah, so I, I already have to eat, like, lactose-free ice so, cream if yeah. I eat it. Yeah. But then I'm on this diet, too, so I have to also eat, like, I'm trying to eat as naturally as possible. So, like, mm -hmm. no refined sugars or anything. But... And nobody believes me, but I found this ice cream. It's called, the name is ridiculous. It's called uh, Cashewlicious, and it's cashew milk-based ice cream. Okay. And trust me, if I was saying this to me right now, I'd be like, fuck off. That's disgusting. It's so good, and I'm also one of these people that tells people to fuck off when they say, like, oh, my God, it's such good, like, almond cheese or whatever. Mm -hmm. I'm like, no, it's not. No, it's, it's disgusting. Not. <laughs> I can't. Uh, it tastes like Breyers ice cream to me. It tastes like now the flavors are basic because it's all. It's all well. It's cash. I like cashews. It's and it's all. It's like five ingredients. I do like it when stuff has less ingredients. Yeah, and it's so it's like it's like all like you know like it's some of the sweeteners agave nectar and stuff yeah. like that. So it's not like refined sugar and stuff. But like the chocolate tastes like chocolate ice cream. The strawberry tastes like strawberry ice like cream. It actually tastes like ice cream. Yeah, ice cream. I can give you some if you want. Yeah, I'm going to have to try it, being a dairy person. Uh, and, um, hold on, get, hold on. <laughs> You're really kind of kidding now. I want you to taste it. <laughs> I want to see your reaction on camera. <laughs> okay. Well, well hello, so everyone. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of How to Do Drugs. Today, we're doing ice cream with Joe DeRosa. <laughs> 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 what flavor do you have? Because it's not real milk, you have to, um, the consistency might be a little... Yeah, is it, is it like a sorbet type of consistency, like an icy? No, it's like ice cream, it's, one of the things I like about it, and I'll let you do this too on camera, <laughs> here's just a, a little scoop of each in the bowl, but... <laughs> Okay. But feel it. When I picked it up in the store, I was like, no, it feels like ice cream. It's it solid. doesn't feel like all, all right. light. Yeah. Like Halo Top is so light. You're like, this is Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I've had Halo Top. All right. It looks like real ice cream. Can you guys see that in the bowl on the video? Those who are listening on Apple or Spotify. We also have a YouTube channel. All right. Okay. It tastes like ice cream, right? Yeah. Like it's not. I like strawberry. I like strawberry. Yeah. The strawberry one's a bit better than the chocolate. Like uh, to me, the strawberry. I was like, no, that tastes like Briar strawberry ice cream to me. Like the could... consistency is. Yeah. It does. <laughs> it really right? does. I'm shocked at how much it tastes and feels like ice cream. It's great. I the mean, strawberry is better. A little bit. The chocolate kind of tastes like coffee. The chocolate has a a bright chocolate flavor. Yeah. But it's a dark. It's it's funny because it's like a dark. It's a lot of dark chocolate. Yeah, yeah. But, so but like for some reason, dark chocolate tastes fruitier, sort of like. Okay, I get what you're saying. It's odd. Yeah. Like, yeah. Well, because there's less sugar in like yeah. the more pure the the chocolate is, the less sugar or whatever. But I mean now. But even a whole, and then a whole pint of that is like 600 calories or something. That's not a lot, right? I don't know. I've never counted calories. It might even be less. I've, I've never been a calorie person. I'll tell you real, I'll tell you real quick. <laughs> but I want to re 
read you the ingredients too. <laughs> I'm so fascinated by it. But I mean, this does apply to your show because. Oh, people are definitely addicted to sugar and food. Food, you know, people have a bad relationship with food. I know I do. I have three cavities. I went to the dentist yesterday. Oh. Well, I have a baby tooth still, and that baby tooth had a cavity, but it's already filled, but it has a chip in it, so now it got deeper. And that cavity gave two of my other teeth cavities, and I'm 43. So <laughs> going to the dentist and finding out that I have cavities was really fucked up considering how much I take care of my teeth. I carry fucking flosses around. People make fun of me because I'm flossing my teeth all the time. I'm, well, I'm do like the way that I mean that yes, people do have a I'm having a hard time finding it, but people do have a sugar addiction. Yeah. But also too, this for me um, ties into a diet I'm on, mm -hmm. and the reason I can't find it. God damn it! <laughs> Why was I even looking it up? Oh, the calorie count. Cal anyway, it's not a lot of calories. Yeah. But uh, uh you know, for me, I, I've been such a um, a drinker my whole life. Yeah. Not my whole life, but you know, since my twenties, mm -hmm. late early twenties. Um, you know, it's my favorite of the drugs. And like I got, I mean, I, I'm I'm like most people. I'm just trying to now reverse the effects of COVID, of just the lockdown of gaining yeah. all that weight and everything. Mm -hmm. But like going on food diets, a lot of the time for me has a lot to do with allowing room for alcohol. Yeah, alcohol has a lot. Yeah. <laughs> you could gain a lot of weight. When I moved yeah. out of Wisconsin and moved to Florida, and I quit drinking the way I did in Wisconsin, I lost 30 pounds in like two months. Yeah, it's wild. It was insane because yeah. the sugar content. I was always drinking like flavored vodka and Sprites, you know, mm -hmm. and um, I did like a lot of tequila. But yeah, a lot of that stuff, you do gain a lot of weight if you drink a lot. Yeah, no, it's true. It's true. Uh, and I, 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 I still do drink, but like I, I, I cut way back and like I drink. I'll only drink like a hard, like a clear hard liquor, sometimes whiskey, but like I don't drink beer anymore. Yeah. At least for now. Mm -hmm. And I kind of like was gonna cheat the other day, and I had it was weird. I had a sip of beer because I thought I was gonna have a beer, mm -hmm. and I was like, "Ew, I don't like it." Like, which was a relief, but yeah, because sometimes you get that that taste for alcohol. Like you have one drink, you weren't planning on drinking, and then your body is like, "No, we're gonna get wasted." <laughs> Yeah, that's, man, god damn it, that's just a... Yeah. <laughs> I like it better when I have a drink and it tastes bad. I'm like, oh, okay, good, it's not a drinking day. Yeah, right? It's it's tough, though, because, I mean, most... I don't know, I find that most alcohol doesn't taste great, right? Like, sometimes you're in the mood for a cocktail, but, like... Mm -hmm. And wine tastes good, but, like... Yeah. That's my, always been my issue, is, like, I don't really like the taste of it that much, so the... I'm always chasing the effect versus the flavor. Versus the flavor. Do you like like fruity drinks? Like uh, pina coladas and stuff like that? I mean, I like the way they taste. Yeah. I don't drink them because of the hangover and the sugar and everything. Yeah, the yeah. the sweeter the drink, the worse the hangover. Yeah. And I noticed when I don't drink, too, I talked about this actually, I think it was last week, that um, when I don't drink a lot, I tend to eat more sugar. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to compensate because your brain is like, we need... That fix. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I, I didn't even realize it, but I, I, I quit smoking on purpose. But like, I didn't realize that when I quit, all of a sudden I was eating a bunch more crappy food, mm -hmm. and I thought I was just depressed. And I was like, oh no, I quit smoking. That's right. Like this happens. I forgot. And then when I started to cut back on booze, it was happening too. Yeah. And then I, you know, eventually you just have to even it out and go, okay, it can't be a fucking free for all. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know, and there's still good stuff to eat. It's just, you know, I try not to eat like Taco Bell and shit like that. You all know? Of the time. Yeah, you do kind of eat um, crappy. I love, yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love bad food. But it's never been sweets for me. I've never had a big sweet tooth. I mean, I like it. I like donuts and stuff. Yeah. But Sweet tooth, that's never been my Achilles heel. It's always been wanting, like, McDonald's and stuff like that. Yeah, no, I... Sweets, especially cakes, cookies, gummy bears, 
all of it. Yeah. I, I love all candy. Yeah, I have three fucking cavities. <laughs> yeah, apparently I really like candy. <laughs> but can you, um, so this is what I never understood because I don't have a sweet tooth. Mm -hmm. What what is it like? Because like like so in other words like, you know like for me with fast food, mm -hmm. like if I have a cheat day, I'm like okay I'm gonna get a Big Mac, and I'm gonna get some KFC, and I'm gonna get some tacos. Like I make a a big smorgasbord of all the crappy shit I like, mm -hmm. and I don't get tired of any one of them. I, I enjoy all of it. I can't finish all of it. Yeah. But I enjoy combining the flavors of all of it. Is it the same thing with sweets? Because with sweet sweets, I'll get a craving, but mm -hmm. like, I'll eat. If I do, I'll eat the chocolate thing, and then I'm like, eh, I don't really want the fruit thing anymore. I hate that. No, for me, um, I have a little like candy basket in my living room that has everything from like little mini candy bars to now and later's to. Um, you know, a Sour Patch Kids, and then I also have, um, like, these little mini um, cheesecake things that are, oh, they're really, really good, and uh, sometimes are they refrigerated, cookies. like? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, it's, it just comes in a, um, it's like a little square thing, they're like maple flavored, and they're just like little squares, and oh, I'll right. eat, um, I'll eat like six of those in a sitting. <laughs> How uh, big are, is this like eating six cookies, basically? No, 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 they're just like little mini squares, you right. know, they're not that big, they're meant, you know, to snack on kind right. of thing, bite-sized little cheesecake things that I started by. That sounds good. <laughs> they're actually really, really good. I noticed, too, that um, when I'm really depressed, I'll tend to eat more candy. When I'm really sad, and I notice yeah. when I'm not as depressed... I don't have that craving for candy. No, I agree. I'm the same way with um, fatty food. Mm -hmm. Like, I get, like, depressed, and I'll start to do... I'll order, like, enough food for, like, multiple people. Same. I won't binge eat it in the sense of, like, I won't sit and eat all of it and then be sick. But, like, I'll eat my fill mm -hmm. and then get tired and then take a nap and then wake up and then eat again. And then eat again, yeah. Because, like, it's the comfort of knowing there's more there mm -hmm. for later. Um, you know, and when I'm not depressed, I won't do that because I don't want to feel tired. I don't want to... Like, yeah, that's just, out. like, lethargic, just... Uh, and a lot of that crappy food, anytime I eat fast food, it's always, I want to take a nap. Yes. <laughs> Afterwards, because your body is like, we don't know what to do with this. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm amazed that, like, I was ever at an age where... I would eat that stuff for lunch at work. Yeah. And then go back to work. And, like, I don't mean, like, even, like... It, it w It's one thing to be tired if you're doing, like, you know, mechanical work. Mm -hmm. But, like, I was doing, like, shit where I had to, like, really be thinking a lot. And, like, when you're lethargic, forget it. Like, yeah, you can't, you can't think. You know, so, like, it's it's just a double whammy, but it's terrible. But, um, but yeah, so... But, I mean... That was, uh, my, my interest in, um, alcohol was what eventually led to interest in some drugs, and then, like, but also, too, it, it bums me out that other drugs don't work for me. I, 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 it bums me out that weed is, has become very much an enemy. Yeah, you don't, um, I don't think I've ever really seen you smoke weed before. I mean, we've definitely done other things, but never. <laughs> yeah. I can't, I can't do it anymore. It makes me crazy paranoid. Like, if I'm very drunk, mm -hmm. I can maybe have a hit of weed or two, or like, have like a five or ten milligram edible. But I have to be drunk. Yeah. I have to be in a place where I don't care. And where I, you I, probably don't even really, where it doesn't even really affect you because you're so drunk. Like you're probably, like, right? You have too much alcohol, yeah. And then also, too, like, I still have to be home when I do that. I can't do that in public. Yeah. Oh, so it does give you really bad, like, panic and anxiety attacks? Like, it makes you really anxious? I can't, yeah. And I've tried, you know, every weed enthusiast is like, well, you should try a sativa, you know, I've whatever. tried this strain. Yeah. You would want an indica. Yeah, yeah, or anything, I'm sorry. Uh, but yeah, I can't, it makes me, it just makes me think, I just go to a bad place with you it. Think, oh, so it makes you, like, um, how some people, when they do acid or mushrooms or, you know, DMT, 
you know, sometimes a lot of dark shit will come up for them. Those are out completely now. You can't do any? You don't do those anymore? I, th- I think I did mushrooms. Um, the la- I, I was a big enthusiast of all, not DMT, I, I only did that once, but, mm-hmm. and it didn't really do anything. I don't think it, it was right, but whatever. Uh, but I was a big enthusiast of mushrooms and acid and E, e as it used to be called before yeah. Molly. Um, all those things. And um, I loved it. The more fucked up, the better. Like, let's go to another planet and mm-hmm. all that shit. And um, I just, I hit a wall with every one of them. One by one, they went out. And sometime over the lockdown, I did Molly for the last time, and I was like, fuck this. <laughs> it did not make me feel good. It made me, I had to like, several times for my friends have to go into the other room oh and like God. sit through a wave of like, I just hated it. And the same thing with the last time I did mushrooms. And also, those drugs hit me very quickly. Like, every time, within 10 or 20 minutes, I'm like, I feel this already. And people are like, there's no way. And I'm like, no, this always happens to me. And then the the more I did them, the bad experiences led to me much more quickly having to go into another room. Oh, wow. Immediately. I wonder why, like, your body breaks it down faster. Or you could be allergic to, like, some of this stuff, too. I assume it's my metabolism, which is, I think, why I've always... I should weigh a lot more than I do Mm -hmm. with the way I eat um, and the way I have eaten my whole life. I don't exercise almost at all. Yeah. (laughs) You know, so I really should weigh a lot more than I do. I have a very high metabolism. Um... I think it's why my drinking tolerance is pretty you high. Can, um, yeah, no, you're a fish. Like yeah. trying to if I now I can I can never keep up with you. In my twenties, yeah, we could probably go drink for a drink. Now sometimes Ooh. when I see you drink, yeah, there's no way. <laughs> Anytime ever hit anyone's like I went out with DeRosa, I'm like, How do you feel? Like, death. I feel like death. <laughs> uh, Mike uh, Mike uh, what's his name? Um, Oh god damn it, Mike! The good Benoia? Look. No, um, younger guy, dark brown hair, good looking kid. Ma- Feeny kid. Mike Feeny. Mike okay. Feeny. <laughs> I'm like, let me name all the mics. He uh, he saw pictures <laughs> that Steve Byrne and Steve Byrne and I were in uh, Vegas together. Mm-hmm. Oh god. Remind me to call Steve Byrne. I own a phone call. Okay. okay. <laughs> I just remember that. Uh, we were in Vegas together, and Steve Byrne the next day posted pictures on the airport, hungover, mm-hmm. and he did a video where he's like, oh my god, uh, and Mike Feeney wrote, neither man nor God has gone out with DeRosa and come out clean on the other <laughs> side. <laughs> and I was so flattered. I yeah. Like, oh, wow, that's yeah. really nice. Yeah, no, you are a drinker. Yeah, when people go out with you, it's, we have to be prepared. <laughs> <laughs> I have to make sure I ate a lot. Yeah. Maybe get a little gram of coke just in case. <laughs> just in case. <laughs> get too drunk. Keep you propped up. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but that's the thing. Like, I'm on. We were talking earlier about meds and stuff. Like, mm-hmm. I'm on meds now that have cut my tolerance down to nothing. Yeah. So now, and then also they've altered the drunk. So now when I dr- it's one of the things that helped me cut back. Mm-hmm. Now when I drink, like, I could have like. I can still have five or six drinks, like mm-hmm. which to, to a lot of people is a lot. It's a lot, yeah. Uh, but it's five or six tequilas or whiskeys or vodkas. Mm-hmm. And that's it. Like, I had a point where I'm like, I'm like swaying and I'm like, oh shit, I gotta go home. Like, mm-hmm. like I'm just messy. And it's not anywhere near as enjoyable a drunk. I'm not getting the charge right now. Yeah, it's not fun. Yeah. It's Which like kind of fun. Yeah. Like, uh, Into a little bit. It's not the same. No, I notice as I'm older too. That is the thing too, is because we are getting older. Like my body just can't handle a lot of the same stuff that I used to do. My body will tell me when I've had enough, you know, wine to drink, because the wine will just actually taste different. It will start tasting really gross. Like my body's trying to reject it almost. Yeah, I noticed a. Um there's a physical difference too. There's like a, you start to feel hot 
Mm-hmm. Not necessarily like sweating, but you just feel like... It's like a hot flash kind of. I mean, you're yeah. a dude, you want to know what Right, right. <laughs> I imagine. It's just like this warm, like, hot kind of feeling that goes through your body. Yeah. And then, like, exits, like, starts at your head and then leaves. And you're like, mm-hmm. what the fuck was that? You're kind of tired and you're just like... Yeah. Yeah, that's one another thing I was... Because I've never really take, taken, like, antidepressants. Because a lot of them have always made me much more depressed and even suicidal, some of them. Like, um, I've had to stop taking this specifically, and my doctor's like, oh, you're going to off yourself and maybe, yeah, yeah stop no taking good. them. Um, so I always wanted to know how certain antidepressants do react with other drugs, because a lot of times, you know, things like cocaine and ecstasy, you know, they they pump out a lot of those happy chemicals and what the antidepressants do is supposed to give you like the right amount of those happy mm-hmm. chemicals. So it's like how I want to know like how those two interact. And I'm assuming, cause we have had talks where like we have partied, you know, mm-hmm. and then the next day it's like, I feel like I could jump off of a roof right now. Yeah. It's terrible. It's terrible. It's, um, you know, it's, it's the, you get the, um, the dopamine spike. Mm-hmm. And then that leads to the dopamine crash, mm-hmm. and that's what gets you in the cycle because, mm-hmm. and you can get it from food too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and you you start to, you know, that's that's what always led to cycles for me, whether it was alcohol or, I would never, I've done plenty of drugs in my life. I would never deny it, but I also don't think I'm. I never would have defined myself as somebody who does drugs. I'm like, no, I do them sometimes. Yeah. You know, but I never was like. No, it's part of my weekly routine, you know? Yeah, where you're, like, planning on be like, today I'm buying a yeah, gram yeah. of Coke, and was, I'm like that. Um, <laughs> I'm, like, I'm a planner, though. <laughs> sure, yeah. I mean, now I definitely do if I'm older, you know, because I am older. If I'm going to go out with certain people or whatever, you know, for a weekend and be like, all right, then I'm taking the next two days off. That's just how it's going to be. Sure, sure. No, I, I, I've done that where I go... You know, all right, it's my birthday. Like, I'm going to clear a day or two on either side of this. And, and and just have a good time. And, you know, I, I definitely, you know, if I have something to do the next day, I'm very big on not going out. Yeah, not, I can't because I can't control myself. I lack that self-discipline. I mean, I don't know. I've seen you. I, I, I mean, I can't speak for you, but I've yeah. seen you out plenty of times where you're like, no, I have to go home. I have to be good. Yeah. You yeah. didn't seem like you were, like, wild or anything. No, no, but if I get a taste for it and then I'm like, fuck, then it's fuck. <laughs> well, you know, that's not as, um, that's not as, I mean, you, I mean, you've probably discussed this at this point on this show many times, but, like, I never fully understood that until recently when I talked to my doctor about it and he explained to me what it is because I always thought that that was some sort of, you know, addict thing or whatever and it's not necessarily it's why you see it's why you see 21 year old you know girls in the street crying after they go day drinking for the first time or whatever it is Mm -hmm. or some frat guy puking uncontrollably Mm -hmm. that's not because they're alcoholics it's because you get a spike and once that dopamine spike happens you get energized Mm -hmm. initially before the depressant part and then you're just chasing the spike. Yeah. That and then makes sense. that leads to you getting sick or too drunk. I mean, I will say this the one thing I'm happy about with this, like, governor um, that this medication has kind of put me on or has put on me is that I've said to my therapist repeatedly, I, it, it's never about drinking for me, it's about the adventure. Yeah. I wish I didn't care about the adventure as much, like, but I get going and I just want to see where the night's going to go. And I do miss that. And I mm-hmm. do know that one day I will return to that. But like right now, even as much as I miss it, I'm like, you know what? It is a relief. Like I don't anymore get that thing after a couple of drinks where I'm like, ah, oh, now what? I'm just like, ah, oh, I could go home if I wanted to. I don't yeah, care. yeah, I've been doing that, especially after the quarantine. I was able to do that when I was, um, when I was still in school, I had one day set aside a week that like, if I was gonna get drunk, that would be the day that I would get drunk. Otherwise I could have, you know, one or two beers and then go home and be fine. It wasn't like I had to continue, you know, keep drinking. I also noticed too when, um, 
when I had a uterus and I would get my period, I would always, um, I would get, I would want to drink more right before my period. Like my body, like I was able to drink a lot more. And that makes sense with, uh, what your doctor says. Like you get that dopamine spike or whatever. You're just trying to, to catch that, to right. chase it. I also think because like a woman's body, like her metabolism changes and stuff like that. So I'd be able to drink like twice as much as I normally do <laughs> sure. just because of that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, it's incredible. And it's, uh, you know, it's why, it's why when you're depressed, you turn to these things mm -hmm. or one of the reasons at least, um, you know, it's pretty scientific. Like I think, I think as life goes on, uh, and science evolves, there's going to be less mystery around alcoholism. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's going to be far more uh, based in just lifestyle versus usage mm -hmm. and why that lifestyle leads to a certain amount yeah. of usage. Genetics has a lot to do with alcoholism, too, for sure. I, right. I definitely know that, yeah. Yeah, well, and that's the thing. It's like how many... Who knows how many people in AA are people that needed some sort of mood stabilizer or some sort of antidepressant mm -hmm. or whatever and didn't have access to it and then they just got themselves into a terrible habit of drinking. Yeah, because that was like a coping thing. It kind of right. helped a little bit, but not the way it was supposed to. Right, right. You know, who knows? I don't, I don't know. But uh, it's interesting. It's interesting. But yeah, I... I I don't know. I associate, I associate alcohol so much with activities. Fun. <laughs> yeah. Going to football games. You always have the best birthday parties. You have the best birthday parties. <laughs> Thanks. Um, I don't right. remember a lot of any of the birthday parties. Yeah. I've seen pictures and be like, that was fun. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I'm, I get that too after I see pictures and I'm like, oh, wow, all right. We did that. But no, I love, uh, I, I love throwing birthday parties. Not to celebrate me, just because it's a great way to get a ton of people together to have a party. Mm -hmm. You know, and like if you, if there's a reason, like, hey, it's my birthday, people that usually wouldn't go out go, all right, I'll come out. And yeah. then all of a sudden, it's a big party. Yeah. It's not just a Tuesday or whatever. So I think that's fun. But, uh, it's an adventure. Yeah, yeah. It's, you know. Um, but I don't know. Like, uh, uh, yeah, and drinking it. And, and then also, too, it's, it's um, you know, social lubricant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it does help. I notice that sometimes when I get really anxious, even though I wasn't planning on drinking, I'll just get one. Just so I have something in my hand, so I like I feel like people are staring at me because I don't have a drink, <laughs> yeah. kind of thing. Yeah, no, I've been there with that, and then like you know, uh, you know, dates. It makes the date so much easier. I'm actually trying now to get out of that. I got myself into a real habit where, um, where like the only dates I would I was going on mm -hmm. were drinking dates. Yeah, go out to a bar and have a couple drinks. And you know, it, it, it's, it's not, I mean, it's, there's nothing wrong with that, but like, yeah, you know, eventually you're like, everybody, you know, you're both probably making decisions you don't want to ultimately make on a first date. Yeah. And like, or, or, or like you just end up romanticizing an evening that wasn't that great, you know, because you were shit-faced and you make out in some bar and you think it was so cool and then yeah. you know, you're like, no, it wasn't. You're not really getting to know each other. And again, I'm not against it. I love a good drunk. Mm -hmm. But um, I'm trying now to like, I did notice that it was getting me, there was nothing wrong with any of the women. Mm -hmm. It was just my practice in the engagement of them was just not healthy anymore. I was, I was going, why am I, I'm like, I'm, 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 I'm spending time with people that I know aren't right for me mm -hmm. because like all of it's just based in who cares like we went out and we did shots and it was a fucking party yeah and it know? was fun and yeah and I, I'm trying to get away from that I'm trying to start having like not so I don't mean sober dates like mm -hmm. in the AA sense but like sober dates like yeah let's go to a museum or that's always a, see know? I like stuff like that I'm a nerd I'll go to a museum I've also, I don't think I have been out on a real date in, I don't know, like a decade, maybe. 
like I, di- I go out to eat with Brutal. people that I've slept with. You know what I mean? Yeah, but yeah. it's not like having a guy ask me to go out. I would like to buy you dinner. Does that even happen? Have you taken a girl out to dinner lately? When was the last time you taken a girl out to dinner? No, not in a long time. It's been like, let's meet. Let's meet at this bar, yeah. and like, hey, if we're hungry, we'll order something at the bar. But it's it's drinks. Yeah, it's normally it's always drinks. Just drinks. Yeah, it's like it's you know. Because women always get weird about eating in front. I used to be like that when I was younger. You know, be very conscientious about eating right. in front of people, and not. I mean, now I don't give a fuck. <laughs> no, I'm 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 self conscious about that too mm-hmm. on a date. Like I don't. I feel weird. Yeah, you know, like I feel weird eating in front of somebody. Yeah, it is a whole. It's an awkward thing. <laughs> yeah, no. The last person I took on a date was my last uh, girlfriend. Mm-hmm. Um. Um. You, you like in that sense? Yeah. Yeah, um, but you guys were already dating. Right? Yeah. Yeah. No, we were already dating. Um. But yeah, no. I just um. It's horrible. It's an awful experience. Like, it's not, like... <laughs> it's horrible. The traditional date is. Like, yeah. something where you can have fun is great. Mini Oscar, golf. You know Oscar? Mm-hmm. Oscar, a- yeah. Gay guy? Yeah. Yes. He, I was talking to him about it the other night. Mm-hmm. He was like, you... We were, and he was like, you need to get out of what the... You know, this... this the same conversation. Get out of the routine. Mm-hmm. And he was like... What do you like to do? And I said, well, I like to play video games. And he was like, you should join a video game group and try to meet someone to date that way. And he was like, you should start a dating app for video gamers. And I was like, I bet you there probably is one already. I just mm-hmm. haven't looked it up. Yeah. If there's not, it's my idea. That's your idea. But, uh, or his idea that he gave to me. <laughs> but, um, but no, he... Um, and I was like, you're right. And, and I remembered... I remembered... Um, and I've met this woman many times. Mm-hmm. I've done podcasts with her, um, like other people's podcasts. We've both been guests, and she's fucking awesome. Mm-hmm. But I remember I did Opie and Anthony once with Seth Green, mm-hmm. and he's we talked a lot about Star Wars and stuff like that because he's into all that shit. And then we talked about dating, and I was like, man, it's just so tough. And he was like, dude, you need to do what I did. And I was like, what'd you do? And he goes, I met my wife at Comic Con. And he goes, dude. I saw a super beautiful woman dressed as Han Solo, and I started talking to her, and now we're married, and it's, and I just saw on Instagram the other day, like, their 10-year anniversary, something, and, um, yeah, and again, I've, I was, like, on Josh Wolf's podcast with her, I was on a couple other podcasts with her, she's so fucking cool, and it's exactly the thing, I'm like, yeah, this is, like, you talk to her, and you're like, this is a female version of me, Mm -hmm. like, so I think we all could be doing that, like going out and meeting people. Not that do these that stupid like the, apps, yeah, that, that dumb, like you know, the same things that yeah. you like, which is. But not, but off of these regular dating apps. Like oh, some, I can't. I, I'm too famous. Right. I'm Pornhub for the dating apps. Right. <laughs> and it's got to be a nightmare for you. Yeah. No, I tried a couple of times, and it just it never. Yeah. It, they, a lot of times too, they creep me out. I, sure. did, I went out on one date, and it was a drinking date with one guy, and um, and that's this was last summer. It was technically, well, my first one was from Hot or Not, you know, back in the early 2000s. You don't remember that? It's where you could, like, rate people how hot they were or <laughs> oh, not. Right. Um, yeah, I met one dude off of there. But, yeah, so technically I think this was off of Tinder or Hinge or something like that. Like, really nice guy, but just not... No, like I can't meet people that mm-hmm. way. I've noticed like some people that I meet at bars, it's like, eh, I've like I've stopped trying to like hook up with people at bars in general. Um, unless it is just like a one night stand mm-hmm. type of thing. But any time that I've actually ever had anything like substantial, it was always just meeting them randomly, you know, someplace besides a bar. Yeah, it's uh it's tough. The the bar scene is tough and, and it's a it's funny. I love the bar scene as a single guy, but not as a way to necessarily meet people. It's just a fun place to hang out. Yeah. I feel like when you're single. I like to hang out and I like to do drugs and I'm not trying to like meet anyone. Oh, I want to want to do fucked bad. up shit. I want to do good rat shit with my friends. There's nothing better than like one of those marathon nights in a dive bar. It's so fun. 
It's so fucking fun. They're, they're my favorite nights of all. Yeah, I know. God damn it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, like, you know, they, um, they, I don't know why I said they, but they, um, you know, it's, it's, I don't know. Like, I would like to, but then also, too, you meet somebody that's too similar to you and it's bad. Yeah, because then maybe you start seeing, like, some things like in them that is in you and that you don't like like it's a reflection almost right right uh yeah it's like i, I definitely don't need to date somebody with my demeanor yeah. i need somebody who brings like some po- uh, no. I'm positivity not as, yeah yeah no you can say it we know who you are though. <laughs> i'm not as <laughs> but here's the thing i'm not as negative as people think no you're not, you're not. i actually do have a, 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 a like I'm like really sentimental and I you love are. Christmas time and yeah. you know like, so you're so, sweetheart on the inside I'm soft on the inside <laughs> but um but I also do need somebody like when I get going on my like pissing and moaning to be like everything's cool it's not the end of the world yeah like, you know I could use a little of that in my in my life I could see that I could see that I was thinking about um, a dating app called Bender where you could find people who like the same drugs as you. Mm-hmm. And like same party style. Cause that's another thing too. Some of the guys that I have dated, um, like they're not big drinkers or like they don't even like to smoke pot. Like that's who I am. And so I try to hide that, you know. But you can find it on, um, I bet you can just go to one of the fuck apps and find that. Yeah. <laughs> no, but I mean, like, you could stipulate, like, I want my one-night stand to be a bender. Oh, yeah, yeah, something like that. But, see, I, like, I don't know if I could do that on on an app. If I'm hooking up with someone when I'm on the bender, like, we have to be partying together. I have to see how they party, you know, probably have already seen them party before, like, partied with them. Yeah, that's the thing, too, yeah, because it can go sideways on you. Yeah, because you don't know how this person is on drugs. <laughs> can they hang the same way we can hang, you know? <laughs> Do you, are they annoying your friends? That's another thing. I'm not going to date someone that my friends hate. <laughs> yeah. my friends hate them, I'm probably going to not like them in the long run, too, because they obviously see something I don't that's see. That's the worst. That's the worst when somebody when you bring somebody into even if it's just drinking when you bring mm-hmm. somebody into the mix that doesn't jive with everybody else yeah. and and the, whatever the party is and it's just like get this person the fuck out of here and then when it's your friend and it's your responsibility and you have to figure out how to rectify it yeah how to get someone sucks. out because you still want to hang out and party but you want to get rid of this person i've sent people home before i've sent people home i've um We've left people at other bars before. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like we're going here. It's horrible, but when we're on a bender, we're on we're yeah. on a mission for fun. Yeah. No, man. Oh, god damn it. That's <laughs> such a. I've had a few of those with my uh, my one of my best friends in the world. Who, when he's come to visit, we we will block. It's usually for my birthday, mm-hmm. but we'll block out like three days. He'll come visit. He gets away from the family. Mm-hmm. And, like, it's always one of those things where we go real late Friday, wake up Saturday, start immediately. Mm-hmm. Go all, it's just so fun. It's just so fun. So fun. <laughs> to, like, leave the house for the first time at, like, 1 p.m. on Saturday and you're already all fucking... Hammered. Jacked. Or, and, yeah. yeah, you're just ready to go. You're, like, you're just having such a good time. Like, God damn it, that's fun. It is a lot of fun. Uh, when was the last time we found out? I want to say, I remember the football game that, that we went time. to. That was super fun. No, we hung out since then. Well, that was, uh, that was the last, yeah, that was the last, New Year's was a party, it was a lot of people. Yeah. I would say the last significant time was that football game. Yeah, it was the football game, but you and like Polly and Tommy, you guys were just slamming shots before we even got in. I know. To the I, stadium. I slept through the game. And then by the time you were sleeping, <laughs> <laughs> did you microdose? Because we... Yeah. Me and Polly, we microdosed. That's why we were so happy. <laughs> no, no. I I drank a shitload and ate some of the barbecue, and then I got inside and realized I was hungry still, and yeah. I ate two or three sausage sandwiches. Yeah, I grabbed some food, too. Yeah. Definitely grabbed some food. And then they stopped serving beer. We went on a mission yeah. to try to find... Polly was trying to, like, bribe people to give us beer. Yeah, it's so funny. <laughs> 
Yeah, that was a fun day. Yeah, I, I woke up... What did I do the night before? I did something the night before, but I was like kind of feeling the effects. Yeah, you said that you, that you felt a little hungover. I was hurting. I, I didn't want to go. I remember when I woke up, I was like, oh, Christ. Yeah, we had to get up early as shit. Yeah, so as soon as I got there, I remember Tommy had a bottle of... He's the rep of Wyoming Whiskey, and they were sponsoring the tailgate. Yeah. Yeah, he had a bottle, and I go, put me in, coach. Yeah, yeah, no, I saw you do six shots <laughs> yeah. in, like, a half hour. I was like, Jesus. I, like, I made sure I ate, and then he gave me, because I don't really drink whiskey, because it makes me me. And so I had, like, a little bit of it, and then I finished it off, and then, yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't take me much. It's really good whiskey. We love Tommy. <laughs> yeah, he's great. He's great. He's great. They, uh, they sponsored the, the outdoor space at, at our bar. It's, it's, we built this Winnebago outside at Joey Rose's, and it's called the Wyoming Winnebago. Amazing. But they sponsored it, and it's awesome. Is it like, is it decorated on the inside? Can you go inside, or is it just on the outside? Oh, no, 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 it's, a, it's, a, it's like our outdoor space. It just oh, like nice. Is it like all like white trash, like Winnebago style? It's like old school, yeah. It's, you'll nice. see. Like there's, like there's like lawn chairs inside, so it's fun. Nice. I was thinking about buying a Winnebago and then just like traveling. I would love to do that. And never, yeah, I have, I like my space though, so I don't. <laughs> I would love to do that. I desperately. We're like a little tiny house somewhere in the middle of the woods. Yeah. Away from everybody. I thought about that too. I'm, I, I, I'm trying to figure that out. Mm -hmm. Like, like the, the, I, I think tiny house is a good idea because it can be moved. Mm-hmm. And I think it's very hard to figure to pick one place, because life changes yeah. and your friends change and people come and people go, people die, mm -hmm. whatever it is, and you know, and environments change. So like, I think a tiny house is such a good idea because you can literally get it towed to the next place. Yeah, wherever you want, or yeah. even a mobile home. You just put it on, you know, the back of your truck and just go. Yeah. Live anywhere. Yeah, you know, and you know, I I I really really want to do that, like, and 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 get like a, a sort of a sanctum, right? That's the word, right? Or is it a sol sol? No, solace. Yeah, sanctum. You find your sanctum, right? Yeah. Solitude, your solace. Some, yeah, whatever the word is. <laughs> I want to. I want to. Uh, figure that out for myself. I love the city. I love New York. It's my favorite place in the world. But you know, I want to have. I want to be able to just get out of here and lock it all out after. Yeah, for, for, it can be because um, there's so many people and it's just so much energy. And sometimes that could like fuck up your energy. Sometimes I'll just go to Central Park and just like sit by a tree, just so I'm like in nature. Yeah. Because you don't get a lot. Um, I need nature. I also need water. So I I always try to live close to water I live like two blocks from the river <laughs> that's really good that's really good that's another thing too like I wish I could uh, I wish I could live somewhere where I could go fishing I find fishing I used to fish as a kid a lot and I stopped mm -hmm. and I haven't done it in years and I find it just like like lake and pond fishing we need to go uh, we should go with Aaron Burke because he goes fishing all the fucking time by his house in Jersey oh really mm-hmm that's great. Yeah. I didn't know there was some, I guess, duh, there's something that close, but. Yeah. I see people like fishing on, you know, on the banks of the rivers and stuff. And I was just like, uh, not here. I'm used to lake fishing. I like deep sea, yeah. you know, fishing. I've done that a little bit, but yeah, I grew up on lakes. I want to be out on a boat, you know, with my grand grandpa, six, you know, six pack. <laughs> yeah. Looking worms for. <laughs> yeah. I just, I, I, I want to just sit on the side of the lake. And set up, you know, yeah. set up shop and just sit there and just it's so peaceful. It's so, you know, like it's just such the opposite of all this. And I love all this, but yeah, you I like both. That's the problem is that I want, if I had enough money, I would build a house on top of an apartment. <laughs> yeah, wouldn't that be great? Building, just have my own little nature area and uh, then also have the city. Yeah, that's the thing that sucks is that you can't really have. Both. Wouldn't that be great? It's Jesus. Fucking phenomenal. Yeah. It, you just need an obnoxious amount of money. <laughs> That's all. Well, I mean, I don't know. You might not these days. I mean, tiny houses now, it's so stupid. You think we could put a tiny house on this roof of your building? It wouldn't fit. No. <laughs> yeah. The, uh, 
But it's so dumb now how, how expensive certain tiny homes are. It's like, guys, the point of this was that it wasn't this. Yeah, that it was cheap. You know, and like, but but you can still do it. There's still there are still plenty of options out there that are under a hundred grand. Yeah, and things that you could build yourself. You could take. Um, I've even seen some, you know, um, like trailers from trucks or, or whatever. The stuff that you see on trains, those big fucking um, container things. They've been turning those into yeah. houses and shit. Yeah, I gotta get it. I gotta. I, I, I gotta start looking into that. I mean, I don't know. I, not that I have a, I don't know. Well, whatever. Who else is it? Um, Josh, Josh Weston, we were talking about, I um, think we should get a group of people that want to do it. Because some of those mobile homes, they're maybe like thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000, but they are bigger than most of our apartments combined. They have, you know, like nice big tubs, you have shower, you have washer and dryer, mm -hmm. and then it moves. Yeah. <laughs> Drives. Are you talking about the... When you say mobile home, do you mean like the RV or do you mean the... Well, there's RVs um, or, or there's the ones that um, hook up to a truck. Right. And then you drive those. There's ones that actually like are a truck, you know... So how much are the truck. ones that hook up to a truck? Um, some of those are anywhere between twenty to 30000 Like the newer, like super up-to-do ones that so have... So they're even cheaper than tiny houses. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah, and then and then to park in like a trailer park or a camping ground, depending, you know, on how long. If you're there for a month, sometimes it's between four to five hundred dollars, and then you know, most of the time water is you know free. They you know they have the pipes. Have you ever gone camping? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah where they have you know the water and you know waste disposal stuff. So that that the I, I love that idea. The the part of it that I don't like is. You're pull. You're in a lot, and you're pulling in right. You're sandwiched in with people. Yeah. That's the one part that sucks. I wish there was a version of that where you could still, like, drive up to northern New York, for example, mm -hmm. and f and and be on a plot of land where you're isolated. They have the, like certain camping grounds. They have it where you can have your own like area. Oh, yeah, Absolutely. you're right. My uncle used to do that. Yeah, yeah. You have like the like the main like general population, you know, where a lot of like campers they'll all park. But then like sometimes it may cost you know an extra five or ten dollars. But yeah, there's areas where you would have your own space. And you could build fires. Mm -hmm. and... I miss fires. I miss smelling like a bonfire. Now I just smoke too much. And I smell like you actually quit smoking again. Yeah, I think I I think I did for good this time. Think, okay. I'm proud of you. Thanks. <laughs> I quit, uh, I don't even know how long it's been. It's been months, but, um, I just stopped and then... I can't do that. I've tried and then I want to murder people. I, I don't... I don't remember why I stopped. I mean, I know I wanted to, because yeah. I felt like shit, but, like, I don't remember what it was. Something made me stop and then I just kept going. And and then once I muscled through the drunks, yeah, that was then I was like, that's All the right, hardest part. I did is it the now. drinking. Yeah, now when I drink, I don't like. I'll still sometimes get an urge, but I almost don't think about it. Yeah, as long as you don't think about it, it's like out of sight, out of mind. That's my problem. Is normally when I quit, I'll have a couple of drinks, be like, I can do this. That's what I would do too. But look, make it fun for yourself. Mm -hmm. Quit and then be like. All right, I'm gonna now go get drunk a bunch of times, and just so I can forcefully not smoke. Forceful. Oh, that's a good force idea. Force myself not to smoke, and yeah. then the reward is I get to get drunk for no reason. Yeah. <laughs> but the thing is, is that you're getting off the cigarettes. But yeah. like that's you know that's kind of how I looked at it a little bit. Like, all right, this will be another test. Like you got to give yourself something. Yeah. Be like, okay, well tonight I'm doing cocaine. Let's see if I could do a couple of bumps and not smoke a cigarette. That might be a little tough. Yeah, that's a little bit yeah, harder. Yeah, yeah. I remember I tried. Uh, I read a study where it said that uh, you know if you microdose, you could do shrooms. It could actually help you quit smoking. I was like, oh, I'm gonna try that. And then I realized I actually like smoking more when I'm on a trip. So it's the exact opposite. Yeah, I had a, I had that was a hard thing for me with 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 smoking. When I felt like charged in any way, mm -hmm. it made me want to smoke more. Yeah. But I I, I want to do the microdosing, but I don't want to feel. I don't want to feel fucked up when I do it. No, you don't. Um, the ones Polly has, uh, the like Roundup ones, the little capsules or whatever, they were the perfect. 
amount. Uh, it, and honestly, it just makes you feel like maybe you had one or, you know, like two to three drinks. You kind of have that, like, warm, euphoric feeling. But, yeah, you're not fucked up. You don't see, you know, anything. There's no trails or squishies or whatever that okay. you see when you're on mushrooms. And, no, it actually does really help if you want to think you know if you're trying to work out some trauma or depression or whatever the microdoses are really really good for that what about the people that are doing it every day for like depression and stuff are they doing that that amount that still sounds like a lot to be doing every day um i mean i've i've tried not to take hallucinogenics you know multiple right. days in a row because i always felt that it weakened it out but yeah i mean if it helps them I mean, the, the thing with microdoses that, and with mushrooms and stuff is that, you know, it doesn't last that long where, you know, a prescribed pill, you know, it's that um, time release thing. So to do a microdose every day, are, are they doing it around the same time of the day? Are yeah, they no, they're, multiple ones? It's going to be legal next year. Like therapeutic yeah. microdosing will be legalized by next year. Yeah, so. I mean, they're already like started with the ketamine. Which yeah, is hilarious. but thing. that's like... The ketamine one is like guided, like you, you. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like have to go in a room, and I was like, I, I talked to my doctor about it. I was like, I'm not doing that. I will f yeah. freak out. Yeah, my uh, friend she had told me about uh, yeah. in Portland what they do either like sit down and talk with someone that day or the very next day, and it's a whole, it's a whole thing with the Fuck ketamine. That. But like, but like, there there's a version of the mushroom thing mm -hmm. where, um, where. I, with the microdose where I know it's like it's like no 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 you take it each day and like you just feel better things seem a little bit brighter mm -hmm. but you don't feel fucked up yeah blah 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 so I don't know if it, maybe that's the amount you're talking about maybe it's less I don't know but I'm yeah, curious whatever, whatever those capsules are that was the perfect microdose and it does happen because you are taking you know hallucinogenic colors are a little brighter but it's not you're not fully tripping it's not um, you're still able to function, um, drive, you know. But I mean, even that, stuff. even with that description, I still get nervous because that's what everybody said to me about Molly. When like I hadn't done E in so many years, and I was going to do Molly, mm -hmm. and everybody was like, "Oh, dude, you it's don't." It's different now, though. It's yeah. not the same as it. Everybody's like, "You don't freak out. Nothing. This, this, this. It's, mm -hmm. it's just happiness." Like, and I was like. No, I completely freaked out. Yeah. I completely felt like I was having a like hallucination. Like, it, yeah. like, I don't know. My body just doesn't agree with shit like that. Yeah, anymore. but it's also it's not the same. Like Molly now is not the same as the like ecstasy, the press pills that we used to do. Back when we were Again, back yeah. Back yeah. harder. Yeah, they were good because I had some press pills. Fucking, I was in the village and some guy gave me um, four for like twenty bucks. I was like, fuck it, take them because they were pressed. You had, um, you had the Mickey Mouse, like, you know, things that I remember from my past. And I was like, okay, these look like they could be really good. Like how I used to take the, right. you know, the Chicago ones. And then I took one and it was just super speedy. It was just like, ah. Oh. That's, yeah, most Molly that I did a couple of years back when it started becoming a thing just felt like speed. Yeah. To the point that we bought a kit and tested it. Because we were like, this is speed. And then it wasn't. It was like, no, this is Molly. And then now... I like it when it's cut with, um, unfortunately, when it's cut with heroin is always the best. <laughs> it's always well, the best yeah. rolls. Yeah, probably, right? Because that's what makes, that's what gives you the, mm -hmm. I want to massage everybody. Yeah, feeling. that like mellow. But, um, but yeah, and then the, the other times I did it more recently, I was like, this, this feels like mushrooms. Like, I don't like this at all. Yeah. Like, um... I don't know. It's weird. Dr like I said, drugs just sort of one by one started to kind of just phase out. And now I feel like even nicotine, now I feel like I could be at the point with booze, but like, I don't want to. I don't want to go the rest of my life without, without having a drink. Yeah. You just don't drink as much as you used to. I don't go out as much. And when I do go out, I try not to drink that much you know now i'm back to like i have my day be like okay i'm gonna get drunk this day this week yeah and like even this like the like way i'm saying the way the medicine makes me feel mm -hmm. like i don't want that for the rest of my life i, I want to be able to again have those days where like you know like you said you go out on a boat with your friends or mm -hmm. a booze cruise and you get fucked up mm -hmm. and it's hilarious yeah you feel stupid and and giddy and whatever mm -hmm. like i don't want to lose that forever yeah um 
But I don't know. Who knows? Maybe after a few months of this, I, w I won't care. People say after six months of sobriety is when things change. And I'm far from sober. But mm -hmm. to me, this is like sobriety <laughs> right now. That's what it feels like. It's your level of sobriety. Yeah. Oh, Two down the mic. Um, so where can people find you on social media? Uh, so Joe DeRosa Comedy on Instagram and Twitter. When does this come out? Um... What day is it? Today is the uh, 5th, so not next week, but the following week. So like the 18th or whatever that is. Oh, okay, cool. Okay, great. So then this weekend, mm -hmm. I will be in Houston, Texas at the Come and Take It Festival on the 19th and the 22nd. And then on the 20th and 21st, I'll be at the Creaking Cave in Austin, Texas. Nice. Come out and see me at either of those. Get tickets at joederosainfo.com. And then Joey Rose's, my bar and sandwich shop in New York City, come it's, by. It's great. Thank you. It's so good. Uh, we're open Tuesday through Wednesday. Uh, basically normal bar hours, but you can go to joeyrosesnyc.com for all the info there. Yes, it's a great bar. Definitely go. Thank you. Big fan. Good Sammy's. Uh, obviously, you can find this podcast at How to Do Drugs Pod on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, please rate and subscribe on Apple, Spotify, iHeartRadio. Um, all the places podcasts are uh, me. You can find me, Thea Leah Janine, on Twitter and Aaliyah.janine on Instagram. Okay, bye.